<laughs> midterm has 27 Are we questions. Going to do our midterm now? I'm going to do it right now. You're going to do it whenever. I don't care. If it's open. Find the greatest common factor of these three terms. Seven is... Seven... Not x squared. Does this have an x squared? Okay. And? 7xy. Seven xy. Seven xy is common to all three of those. It's a common factor. And it's the greatest of all the common factors. You couldn't say 14xy because these other terms don't have a 2. I'm trying to copy the problem. Find the GCF. Yeah, not solved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, wait. They would have laughed at Factor out the greatest common factor. Two terms. X minus two. This is a term. This is a term. In common, they have x minus 2. To type it in factored form, I would factor out my x minus 2. There it is. What's left over? Huh? No. Each one of these has an x minus 2. By the distributive property, it factors out. Okay. And then what's left over? x plus 3 and then x plus 4. You can combine like terms on the thing in brackets. It's 2x plus 7. Factor by grouping. There's four terms, so you factor by grouping. From the first two terms, they have a uh, two in common. So I will factor out a two. I'm left with two minus x. I have got to get a two minus x over here. Is it just 5y? Negative. negative 5y. A negative 5y has to factor out because if you distributed that back in, you'd get negative 10y plus 5xy. Now they each have the 2 minus x in common. And what's left over is 2 minus 5y. Complete the following. So I say, why would it the factor out? Wait, what'd you say? Is that someone, what else does factor out as that equation? 
we know that one of the factors is x plus 1. Okay. The other factor has to be x minus 5 mm -hmm. because it's got to be only an x here because x times x is x squared. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a minus 5 because 1 times minus 5 is minus 5. Mm -hmm. Notice that that answer box already has the parentheses, so it would get counted wrong if you if you put the parentheses. Yeah. Uh, on the previous question, when we put the answer in, does it matter the order we put it in? Of course not, because no. multiplication of numbers is commutative. Three times five is five times three. This is called a. Difference of two squares. A perfect square would be something like x squared plus 2x plus 1 because it factors into x plus 1 squared. Okay. This factors like what? C minus A. C minus A. And this factorization is called a blank pair. Con I know it's not really Conjugate. Yeah. Close. You, you had to like see I was I was close like enough. Communicative. <laughs> Compare. <laughs> Contrast. <laughs> Connotative. Connotative. I know that was true. <laughs> 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 This is a perfect square. How does it factor? It is a minus two squared. squared. And that's a perfect square. It's a perfect square. This one's going to hurt. This one you haven't actually had a homework problem on. This is a difference of two cubes. Yeah. Remember this acronym, and it will help you. SOPS. 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 It will help you. And then one day you'll learn the, oh, you probably won't, but if you ever studied math more, you'd learn the binomial theorem. You could factor difference of something to the fourth power, or to the millionth power, or whatever. So I need a 3 and an n. Maybe n minus 3. 3 minus n. 3 minus n. No. No, just 3 minus n, right? 3 minus n times 9. 9. Well, how'd you get 9? 9 times I'm going to look at this. Only, so, so, so this says, 3 cubed minus n cubed. And here's my 3 and my n and my minus, right? Okay, I built this thing. Now don't look at this part anymore. Just look at this and do SOPs. 
the first S stands for square. You square, you square the first term. Square the three. You square the first term. O is for opposite. Opposite sign. This was a minus, so this should be plus. P for product. N minus three. Three times, three times N. You have a three, you have an N. Yeah. P for plus. And then square the last. Uh, yeah, square. Okay. So you square the first opposite sign, square the first opposite sign, product plus square the last. And then you can always verify that this is correct because you just distribute the three to all three of those terms. You'd get 27 plus 9n plus 3n squared. And then you distribute the minus n to all three of those terms. Minus 9n, minus 3n squared, minus n cubed. Doesn't Where that collapse down? Huh? Oh, never mind. I see it from the, I, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Never mind. All these terms in the middle cancel. Questions? Does it have a GCF? Yeah, yes. four. Four. Let's factor it out. Can you factor it further? Mm -hmm. This thing is equal to zero. So what are the values of A that make this equation be true? Two and negative two. two, and negative two. Give the domain of the following rational function in two ways, set builder and interval. So this is the set of all the x values where x is a real number, but X is different from those things. And what should X be different from? Negative 1 over 5. It must be negative 1 over 5, because if you put that number there, the 5s would cancel. It'd say minus 1 plus 1.
in interval notation, I should list an interval of all the real numbers that misses minus one fifth. So negative infinity, right? That's where it starts, yeah. Okay. So domain is the only thing we have to do that like you think, right? Like, you know, like union, I guess? Yeah. Okay. Not on a solution set, just domain. Right. Just on the interval notation. Where? All of it. All of it. We're getting one fifth from. We're getting negative one fifth. Yeah, where we get negative one fifth from. There's Look at this denominator. Can you divide by zero? Yeah. Doesn't negative one fifth, if I put that in for x, wouldn't this be a number over zero? So we can't have negative one fifth in our domain. That's the point we must exclude. Doesn't this right here say, isn't this right here a symbolic notation of the entire number line except for negative one fifth? It stops at negative one fifth? It skips over it. Neither of these, neither of these have negative one fifth in it. Because it's using the parentheses. It, go, it goes all the way up to minus one-fifth, stops without including it, skips minus one-fifth, and then keeps on going. I would not just multiply straight across. I would do my cancellation first. Mm. Always try and take advantage of that cancellation first. There's, n it, it, it's always going to result in an easier problem. Always, because you're going to have smaller numbers. It's a union. It's not a capital U from my keyboard. It's the union symbol from the toolbar at the bottom. That union symbol, which is right here, takes two interval and it stands for union. Oh, it's like the same but different? No, it's, it means, I mean, when you join together in holy matrimony, you're forming a union <laughs> that becomes a single entity. Oh, okay. I took these two intervals and glued them together to form a single object. Oh, yeah. So it basically groups them together. Yeah. Okay. This thing simplifies I would do the simplification before you do the multiplication. Right? Mm -hmm. And then you cancel out. I can cancel twos. Yeah. I can cancel threes. Three times 17. 51 is 5 plus 1, isn't it? Yeah, so that's 6. Oh, so you left with 2. Which is divisible by 3. three. So 51 is divisible by 3. 7 over 26, which won't simplify any further because 7 is prime. 7 is prime and 26 doesn't have any factors of 7. So instead of multiplying 3 and 14 and 39 and 4, I only had to multiply 2 and 13. If you was 
to multiply them all together first and then simplify, you would probably get the same answer? You would definitely get the same answer, provided you made no mistakes. Mm. Yeah. But it would not be in lowest terms. You would have to then simplify, simplify it. it. But can you guess what you'd be canceling on top and bottom? A 6. Write the, write the rational expression in lowest terms. It's already factored for you. This is beautiful. Just cancel. Z minus 4 over Z plus 9. The Z minus 1s. This is a quotient of two rational expressions. To divide by something is to multiply by its reciprocal. That is the definition of dividing by something. The second one. Yeah, it's the second one as well. You ought to be able to see what the answer is then. Everything else cancels. You're fine. What, there's, that problem, Rosalinda, was <laughs> super easy. Super easy. You can do this problem without even writing anything down. I mean, it, this, is this is divide by something. So I need to multiply by the reciprocal. A ton of stuff cancels here. Look, the y minus 2s cancel, don't they? So don't write them. The y minus 2s over here cancel. We don't need them. This would be 5y plus 6 over y plus 5 times y plus 5 over y minus 3. Can those y plus 5s cancel? Rosalinda? Y plus 5 is they going to cancel? Then what's the answer? It's written, it's, it's just right here. It's the leftover stuff. It's 5y. The answer is 5y plus 6 over y minus 3. Indeed. Can I cancel this 6 and this 3? Yes. Absolutely not. You can't. You cannot. Oh, why? <laughs> Riley, can I cancel this 6 and this 3? Oh, oh, no, yes, you can. The, the no, you cannot. Is naked, so. No, wait, no, you can't. Back can I cancel these Y's? No, you cannot. No, you cannot. How come I can't do that? Because it's 
in the simplest form. Look, look, watch. Let y be any number. Pick, pick a number in the domain of this thing. I pick y to be 0. Okay? I pick y to be 0. If y were 0, what do I get? Negative 3. No. Oh. But on the top or bottom? The whole thing. If y were equal to 0, then that would come out being? 0. No, it would be 5 plus 6 is 11. It would not be 5 plus 6. six. No, it would just be 6 over negative 3. Negative okay, two. which is negative 2. Okay. Negative 2. If you canceled the 6 and the 3, and y were 0, it'd be undefined. You can't cancel like that. Maybe you picked y to be 1 instead, like what you were trying to do. Then you would get 11 over negative 2 when y is 1. But if the 6 and the 3 could cancel, you'd just get 5. And 5 is not negative 11 halves. I get what you're saying, but can you put it in words so I can remember, like... I can't cancel this out because... Why can't I cancel? I can cancel only because I have a multiplication by 1. That's the only reason. If I had 6y plus 6 over uh, 4y minus 2, then I can factor a 2 from the top and I can factor a 2 from the bottom. Right. Do you see how I have a multiplication by 1? Yep. Then, this is why I am able to do cancellation. I have a product. It is being multiplied by 1. This says 1 times this other stuff. If you don't have a multiplication by 1, you can't cancel. Okay? Multiply. Uh, yes, very nice. So, uh, 32 and 8 have a GCF of 8. So, I would write this as 5 times Z times 8 times 4Z plus 1. Because I want to simplify oh, this thing. We're, we're just taking over the. Uh, I was like, where did you get five z? Twenty z plus five has a GCF of. Nope. Well, oh uh, yeah, sorry. My bad. The five factors out, and you're left with four z plus one, and then here's my seven. So fives cancel. 4z plus 1 cancels. So you're left with z plus 8z over 35? Not 35, because the 5's cancel. Oh, oh, 
I think I, I understand, like, kind of because if it was, like, one-third and maybe, like, three over nine, you would just change the one-third to nine, you know, and not multiply three and nine. Does that make sense or not? Yeah. That's kind of the same thing. A right? three times nine is merely a common but it's multiple, but it's not the least one. Yeah. Yeah. So the least common multiple of one-third and five-ninths, the least common multiple of the denominator. Mm -hmm. It would just be three-ninths three plus five-ninths. What? No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm confused. I don't, I, <laughs> Look. I don't even get the 14 one. Why did we change numbers? It's okay, check it out. This one has an X, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, then my LCM at least has an X. Yeah, you were saying this before. It didn't make sense then either. Well, I'm going to say it again, and it's going to make sense this time. Ready? <laughs> Pay attention. This one has an X. Uh -huh. So my least common multiple needs an X. Right. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Here's, here's, my, here's my LCM that I'm working on. Now I'm going to look at this one. This one's a 14X. Uh -huh. So I've already got an X here. I don't need another one, do I? No. But I need a 14. 14. No, that doesn't. I, yeah, I, mean, I do. I, get, I, I just, when you said it before, I was like, all right, I'm going to press the 2 plus 2 equals 4 is basically because math. It doesn't make sense logically. But can you, like, that's why I did the 3, like, because, okay, we know the answer is 14x, but can you explain it in another way so we can always find the least common denominator? <clears throat> Factor the denominators, okay? Factor them completely. Uh. Make a list of all the unique factors. Go through that list and look for all of the biggest exponents. Among these two uh, denominators, you have x's, you have 2's, and you have 7's. And the exponents on each one is just a 1. Then my least common multiple is this product every time. Uh, what's the greatest common factor of x and 14x? X. x. So while while for the least common multiple, I looked at the gr I looked for the greatest exponent. For the greatest common factor, I need to look for the least exponent. Oh, so that's why you don't want it to be, four, I'm sorry to interrupt you, 14 over x to the second because you're looking for the least exponent. Or I'm still on. I'm looking for the least exponent that's common to, to all of them. This one, this one is x to the 1 times 2 to the 0 times 7 to the 0. The 14x is 2 to the 1 times 7 to the 1 times x to the 1. Among the twos, what's the lowest exponent? Zero. My GCF should have a two to the zero. Among the sevens, what's the least exponent? Zero. My GCF should have a seven to the zero. Among the x's, what's my least exponent? One. My GCF should have an x to the one. And that's what this says. Two to the zero times seven to the zero times x to the one. Okay, but the other one only has an x. So I just don't get what, it, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hold it everyone else's. I just. No, 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 fine. No, I feel. The, the least common multiple, here we have, here we have, uh, do, do, the, do the very same thing. Do the very same thing, but instead of looking for the least exponent, choose the greatest exponent. 
The greatest exponent on the twos is a one. Mm -hmm. The greatest exponent on the sevens is a one. And the greatest exponent on the x's is a one. Then your least common multiple is two times one times seven times x. That is all there is to it. No? Yeah. I'm, I'm, let's just move on. I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> no, so no like, we're not doing it. It literally doesn't make <laughs> You're sense. You're working on beyond this one until you get it right. No, it just doesn't compute because there was an x and a 14x. Like, how, why? How did... It's okay. I get it, but I don't, it doesn't. Do this one. Factor it into primes. 6 is Six. 2 times 3. Specifically, it's 2 to the 1 times 3 to the 1. 24 is 6 times 4, four. four. which is 2 times 2 and 2 and 3. 2 cubed times 3. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Greatest common factor has me look for the lowest exponents. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? The greatest common factor has me look for the lowest exponents. I have these symbols, 2 and 3. Yeah, it's going to be one of those symbols and one of those symbols because those are the lowest exponents. The least common multiple has me look for the greatest exponents. Two, you know, th this one has a, a three, and the biggest exponent on the threes is a one. So my least common multiple will be two cubed times three to the one. And it can't be six because six because um, what are the multiples of twenty-four? It's 24 to the first power, 24 to the second power, 24 cubed. Six isn't on that list. Six is not a multiple of 24. 24 is a multiple of six. That could be where you're getting screwed up. The least common multiple looks for the biggest exponents. Okay. That made me more confused. It made you more confused. I just don't know. I hear what you're saying, but it doesn't. Okay, I mean, that one makes more sense than the 14x and x thing, because, like, you just broke up 14x, and, like, the other one only had x. So the only, other one only had one yep. and an x. Because, yeah, I'm a little bit confused, too, because the way I remember talking about it, it was a problem with a 2 4 because it was like, you know, it was a 2 as a denominator and a 6 as a denominator. And maybe this is small because when I just explained it, it was small. I know. Small. Like, that's why I would do 6 times 4. That's what I was expecting. And it, it would give me 24, and then I would do 6 times the 4 times the numerator because I did it to the denominator. Yeah. And then I'll have both of my it's not denominators 24. That's but I wouldn't touch the 24. Does that make sense or no? It don't make sense to me either. I don't know. Do we agree? that this is a list of the multiples of six. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, um, or th th this, okay, so I could also have things like, um, but it was, it was technically one, right? Because it'd be, it was X and 14. That's what I don't get. This is, so this is more correct. This is the multiples of six. On and on and on. Yeah. 